they go into the, into the plants as elements dissolved in water. But I don't want to put out a weed killer over my entire lawn when it's not needed that way. So weed and feed products are over the top as far as I'm concerned. The same fertilizer, that all nitrogen fertilizer, here's a coincidence, can be used on almost all of the plants that you're trying to grow, whether it's tomato plants or shade trees or turf grass, you can use it on almost anything that you're trying to grow. Steps to weed control. Number one, proper feeding at the right times. Remember what I said? You have to, you have to take the best possible care of your lawn. Number two, proper irrigation. If your lawn is healthy and vigorous and growing actively, then it's gonna resist the weeds. Water deeply, I'm about to water deeply. Big, thirsty drink. Mm -hmm. If I were turf grass, I would be saying thank you for that nice drink. And water less often, the lawn won't get thirsty quite so quickly. If you water 20 minutes a day, and, uh, and, and or just spritz the lawn, hold the hose and you spritz the lawn. What happens when you do that is the grass roots come up to the surface of the soil and they're just kind of yipping like chihuahuas for their little bit of water. And then when you forget to do it, they die right away because they're all of a sudden not getting their water. Regular mowing at the recommended height to keep the grass low and dense. Think about how great Bermuda grass, for example, looks when, when it's in a crack in the pavement and you drive across it a bunch. You keep it low and dense and it's thick, it crowds out the weeds, and it just looks great. If you let it get too tall, it gets leggy, weeds will invade, it gets very stretched and uh, weak. And then, after you've tried all the other things, use the appropriate weed killer as needed. Read and follow those label directions. To pick the best weed killer, it's not a big deal. People on my Facebook page will post a question. It's, it's kind of interesting. I'll show it to my wife. Say, they don't care what that weed is. They'll, they'll post, uh, oh, like the thing in the lower left. Neil, what is that weed, all those seeds? If I tell them, I can guarantee you that I can eliminate that weed in your lawn, that, great, that's perfect. Or if I tell them that's annual bluegrass. Oh, well, that's nice. How can I get rid of it? That's what they really wanted, but they don't ask the whole question. They just ask, what is this? And, and, and so to cut to the chase, you don't have to know what the weed is to be able to control it because odds are it's not going to be on the label of the product. There are too many weeds. Let me tell you how to find the right weed killer. You have to be able to answer three pairs of questions. That's all you have to do. Here are the three pairs of questions. Is it annual or perennial? Annual meaning does it come up in the spring, grow, or at some time during the year? Does it germinate, grow, and then produce seeds and die like grass firs do? That's an annual weed. It sprouts in the spring, grows in the summer, makes its seeds right now, and it's gone. The uh, flower, the really pretty flower there is henbit. Henbit is uh, germinating right now and it will bloom its head off for about a week and a half in March. And I'll tell people how to kill it in March and they will say, it's beautiful, Neil, you are anti-American. You're killing wildflowers. And one week later, it's just ugly as all get out. So an annual bluegrass doesn't look like anything right now. You can hardly see it out in the lawns. It's just germinated. But by March, it's awful. And uh, so if it's annual, you can use a pre-emergent weed killer. Those three are annuals. That's Dallas grass on the right, D-A-L-L-I-S grass on the right, lower right. And that is perennial, so you have to deal with it totally differently. Is it cool season or warm season? If you're dealing with an annual weed where you're going to have to use a pre-emergent, you have to know whether it's growing in the winter or in the summer and uh, time your pre-emergent weed killer back accordingly. And third, is it a grass or not a grass? Uh, the uh, not grass means it's a broadleafed plant. You have one broadleaf plant in these pictures and that's the end bit with the purple flowers. Grasses have parallel veins and their flowers are not showy. Okay, 
No offense meant for Heinz vinegar. This is my wife's favorite vinegar. That's where I found this bottle and took this photo right in the pantry, 10 steps from where I'm sitting. Stick with legally labeled products. I decided I wanted to just photograph a product you would recognize instead of one that I would find in a garden department of a place that sells things that I won't even touch. I don't want to endorse them. I won't take them as advertising products. There was a long time that you could buy vinegar for killing weeds and it did not have any kind of label telling you how to use it, how to protect yourself, what to do if you spilled it on your hands and your eyes. Didn't have any of that. Oh, it had a label. It said, this is vinegar. Don't cook with it. Don't drink it. Don't do anything with it. This is vinegar. Over here on the sheet of paper, which is not the legal label, it said, oh, this is going to kill weeds. You can do this, you can do that. But that's not the legal label. If you got hurt using that product, you couldn't sue the company from that piece of paper because on the legal label, it says, don't do any of these things. I don't want that on my conscience. I stick with legally labeled products. Perhaps it's the experience of growing up with a dad who was a professor at Texas A&M and watching him spend 25 years of his career doing the testing for various companies to prove what they were trying to claim. Beware of home remedies. You'll never hear me allow somebody to give a home remedy in my program. And you'll never hear me give a home remedy of how to get rid of weeds. Organic is not always safer. I'm all for organic gardening where it is safer or where it is at least equally safe, where it makes sense. But don't think that organic is better because it isn't always better. Organic produce doesn't taste any better. Uh, the plant does not discern whether it's taking in elements out of, a, as I said, out of a fertilizer plant or out of cow. Um, organic gardeners are more careful gardeners, and that's often why their produce is so much better. But it's not because they were grown organically with organic fertilizers. And organic things are not always safer. I care and I worry and I pay attention because I have a grandson, Joseph, Joseph who uh, uh, is now 11. Been a few years that have passed since that photo was taken. I have a great granddaughter, Jackie. This photo was taken three weeks ago. I care about our environment and I pay attention. We have, um, we have six other grandchildren and no other great grandchildren. We're not that old. <laughs> Look for valid land-grant university reports. A land-grant university is an ag college. That's Texas A&M, LSU, Oklahoma State, Clemson. Rutgers is a land-grant university for New Jersey. Uh, university of Arkansas. Usually it will be the A&M uh, or the state university uh, in like Ohio State where I got my two degrees. I grew up in College Station but transferred up there. That's how you'll tell the land-grant school. But in some states, um, uh, there isn't, uh, you know, until Texas State took that name, we didn't have a, a Texas State University doing the, so it was Texas A&M. But anyway, you need, to, you need to find the land grant school and that research is what you can trust. Don't trust research that has been done by Jack's laboratory. And then you find out later that the company making that mosquito trap is owned by Jack somebody or whatever. Don't, that's, where you, that's where you'll run aground uh, when you find uh, uh, that you've been deceived, that the, a lab is not really a, an independent lab. It's owned by the company that's making the product. All right. Practice good irrigation. You never know, even in the middle of a flooding rainstorm, when the next drought will hit Texas. And so you always want to practice good irrigation practices. Quality ir uh, equipment in good repair. Have uh, somebody come out and run an irrigation audit on your sprinkler system if you have one. Um, I, I don't have photos in here of a water bubbler or a water breaker. I should have had those in and I'll have them in the next time you invite me to speak. 
but uh, those are two wonderfully useful tools. A water breaker, you know, that's the thing you see often in garden centers that looks like a shower head. A water bubbler looks, it's about the size of your fist, and it lets you turn the water at full volume and you won't wash the soil out of a pot. It's great. So I recommend those highly. Have a smart controller. This, if you have a sprinkler system, a smart controller will, uh, will n predict what the, what the uh, rainfall has been, what it will be, uh, what the wind is. It will monitor the wind. It knows what your soil is. It knows what your slope is. It knows what plants you're trying to grow. Um, and they're really cool in that if you're on a slope with a clay soil and you're growing a plant that's going to need a good bit of water, it may tell that sprinkler. So this was happening last night when my wife and I drove in our driveway. It was watering one station near our front door for the fourth or fifth time. It had gone through the entire cycle and had come back to station two and watered it several times because there's enough of a slope that it would have run off otherwise. So you need to, you need to have a smart controller that will do that for you. They pay for themselves. Learn to recognize dry plants. Don't ever water a plant that's already uh, wet, um, but learn to recognize when the plant is beginning to get dry and then water it pretty quickly at that point. Water deeply and water less often. I just took a little bitty sip. I should have taken a big drink. I will in a minute. Buy quality tools. This is uh, Flexogen Hose. I have never gotten a dime from Flexogen Hose. I'm not on their payroll. This is not an endorsement. It's just true belief in a product. Since I was in college, it's the only hose I've ever used, ever bought. Won't buy another brand because, well, it's now been bought by somebody and it's, I mean, it, it has a, a slightly different name. But, oh my goodness gracious, these hoses last. And uh, you get a hose like that, you're going to save money in the long run. Uh, the same is true for other gardening tools. Buy reinforced shovels. They won't break in this uh, heavy clay soil. All the way through, buy for quality. Prune with a purpose. What on earth were they thinking? Is there no imagination left in maintenance crews? Oh my goodness gracious. That's Texas sage. It's a beautiful rounded shrub. This is in Allen, Texas. And if I ever want to learn how to prune shrubs, that's the last place I'll go. Everything there is just square as a box. Why didn't they just go to a lumber yard and buy some plywood and green paint and gray paint and build some boxes and set them out? It'd be so much easier. Wouldn't ever have to water them. Have the same look. Nobody'd know. Oh my goodness, let a plant grow naturally. Buy a plant that fits the space that you have and then let it grow. Poor things. Choose plants whose sizes fit the spaces available. If I were to look up from my iMac right now and look out the windows of my office, I would see the old flower heads on those oak leaf hydrangeas. That's the outside of my office looking in, and I sit in the inside looking out, and I can see them right now. I'm looking right there, and there they are. I love that plant, and that's my vista. Once they're through blooming, I trim them back enough that I can see farther out into the woods in that backyard setting that I have. Choose plants whose sizes fit spaces you have and prune them naturally. Don't prune them square. My goal, I forgot to warn you of this, my goal when I begin one of my talks is to offend everybody in the room. <laughs> and probably I offended most of you with that one. To repeat, prune with a purpose. That is not a purpose. It's kind of cute, but it's not a purpose. I have found in all those years of broadcasting and photographing and talking to people that probably 90% of the pruning that I see done is either done wrong, it's done at the wrong time, or it didn't need to be done in the first place. What are you doing? Go watch a ball game. Go vote. Go do something. Choose the best. By the way, you're about to see two number 29s. I promised you 30, and I have two number 29s. I messed up. 